Is your beautiful garden being destroyed by insects? If so, you have come to the right place. We have gardening expert Antonio Valente here with us to share some tips to help stop those bugs from invading your green space. So good to have you in. Thanks, Kels. Backstage, I was asking you personal questions about my garden yes. because uh, we planted roses this year for the first time, mm -hmm. and aphids were a big thing. And my mom said, get ladybugs, and yeah. I didn't know if that was real, but it is. Yeah, that's a thing. Yeah, ladybugs love aphids. They will eat them up. You can purchase them at your garden center. Garden center, and you can also get other types of uh, predatory bugs. Yep. Is that the right word for them as yeah. well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can get praying mantis um, egg um, cases, and the they will hatch in your garden. They will eat all the bad bugs. Yeah. Who knew? Praying that, mantises. Yeah. yeah, you can buy bugs at your gardening center. Yeah. When it comes to those pesky pests, there are three main culprits yes. in the garden that we want to focus on. The first one generated a lot of conversation in our meeting yesterday. These Japanese beetles. Brutal. Okay, so tell yeah. us about these guys. Okay, so Japanese beetles have this voracious appetite. They are really, it's a really bad season for the beetles this year. So what can you do to take care of them? Okay, so if you go to your garden center, this here is a Japanese beetle trap. Okay. Okay, but you need to be careful with these. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, because you could wind up and, uh, with even more beetles in your yard. Yes, if you're the only one in your neighborhood using one. Why? <laughs> because they, uh, they are scented and uh, the, the Japanese beetles can smell them from quite a distance and they can in fact bring more to your yard. Now, if you can get your neighbors on board to using them, that's great. Then the population of the beetles, the distribution remains the same. But if you're the only one using it, your neighbor can thank you. Bad news, Bad news. Okay. So what, you, what I would recommend instead are these here. These are nematodes. Okay. Okay, it's a parasite that feeds on the larva or the grubs of the Japanese beetles. Okay, so we're thinking long term with this. Yeah, yeah. Things. And this is so this is a native Canadian beneficial insect. So you're not introducing anything that's gonna become invasive. And so this is actually the perfect time of year for, to apply it. Actually, wait a couple more weeks. Apply it in September. You're gonna mix it up with some water and then you're gonna put it in an applicator and then you're gonna water it in really well to your lawn. Okay. September is when Japanese beetles will be laying their eggs for next year's crop of Japanese beetles. So this kills all of those eggs. Yeah, so this feeds off of the larva. So once they hatch, they're in your lawn, overwintering, these guys will be feeding on them. Okay, and then next year you're good to go. And then next year you're good to go. Are you kind of hooped for this year? Yeah, the season's pretty much well coming okay. to an end. So, but like I said, this is the perfect time of year to be applying this September. So wait a couple more weeks and apply the nematodes much safer and better to use than the uh, than the traps. Okay, sounds yeah. good, proactive. Yeah. Next we have slugs. Slugs can be a problem. They're a little bit harder to diagnose, is that right? Yeah, that's a thing. So most gardeners, when they have a slug problem, they don't know it because they're nocturnal. They come out to eat at night. Oh. Okay, so how do you know you have a slug problem? So I have a hosta leaf here that has uh, typical slug damage. This is not from your garden, <laughs> This is not from obviously. my garden, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> the hostas in my garden are like perfect. Right. Uh, so most insects will eat the, um, the foliage or the petals from the outside in. Uh, slugs, on the other hand, will create holes in the leaf. So that's oh. how you know you have a slug problem. Oh, I think I have slugs. Yeah? I see this in my garden, my holes? sunflowers. Yeah. Yes, okay, then you have slugs. Oh, so what do or I do? Or snails. Okay, so the best thing for that are this here. This is slug bait. Okay. or slug pellets, Ugh. and you apply this on the surface of the soil around your plants that are being affected. Okay. Okay. And then what, like it just gets rid of them? Yeah, it gets rid of them, they eat it, they die, and um, they're, they're done. Okay. Yeah, you can also create something that's called a beer trap, if you look that up online. They're just, you just take a bowl, a shallow bowl, insert it into the ground at the level of the surface of the soil, uh, put beer into that, and uh, the slugs are attracted to the scent of beer, they fall in and drown. Okay, and yeah. then that could help. Obviously, you're, you're not gonna have the regeneration this year of your leaf, but no. it's getting rid of them. Yeah, getting rid of them and hopefully better results next year. Okay, so why, we talk about a tidy yard, but why is that so important to keep everything kind of clean in your yard space? Yeah, clean for, okay, our third insect that we're gonna be talking about, earwigs. So, <laughs> yeah, terrible, we hate them, we look at them. Like, I mean, come on. They're disgusting. That's scary looking. Um, yeah, so, Earwigs love to hide in like dark, moist areas. So that's the first thing I always recommend to gardeners. Keep a really tidy yard. Like if you've got like stacks of wood and debris everywhere, that's a perfect habitat for earwigs. So start there, clean up. Okay. Okay, but if you go to the garden center and you want to start applying a product, this here is called uh, diatomaceous earth. Okay. You apply this again on the surface of the soil around the plants that are being affected. The earwigs will crawl over it 
And what it does is it scratches and cuts them up and then they slowly dehydrate to death. Oh, the way you say <laughs> this, then I start feeling bad for all these insects we're no, trying to get rid no, of. No, <laughs> Kels, that's what they get for being in my garden. Right, okay. Okay, your wig, so. Fair enough. Okay, so lastly, we have an alternative product to use. Yes. Insecticidal soap. Yeah, so the other sort of all-around purpose, really good insecticidal to use is this here. It's insecticidal soap, safe for home gardeners to use, uh, great for, you know, aphids or anything else that we haven't spoken about today. And then the other thing I want to mention is this here. This is neem oil, a little bit tricky to find in Canada. You're gonna mix it up, it's a concentrate. Another good all around safe um, product to use uh, okay. for insects in general. Okay, thank you so much, Antonio. Thanks, making, Carlos. Making our lives bloomier and brighter. That's right, yeah, we more love beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for watching. If you like this, be sure to subscribe here. And you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.